Okay, so today we're going to talk about, uh, do a little introduction to automation. Alright. Okay, so first let's look at what is a control system. Alright. It's a device or a set of devices. Okay, it's not just one thing um, that are coordinated to execute a planned set of actions. And it just does exactly what you tell it to, okay? Um, the control systems in general are not adaptive. They only take the steps you tell them to. So you have to be very clear and very precise about what you want them to do, all right? So let's look at what the definition of automation is. Automation is the technology by which a process or procedure is accomplished without human assistance, okay? So, some things are fully automated and some things are partially automated. Um, a fully automated system would be with no human intervention. Partially automated means that parts could happen using automation and have human interaction, all right? The um, basic elements of an automated system include three things. Uh, one is power, okay, that's the power to accomplish the process and to operate the automated system. A program of instructions to direct the process, okay, those are, that is what you would have to put in the controller, okay, and, and then the control system that actuates the instructions. All right, okay, let's look at power to accomplish the automated process. That includes power to make drive the process, to load and unload, um, and transport between operations. Now that would be in a fully automated process. There are lots of automated pieces of equipment that don't have all three of these pieces, okay? But those are the steps in a fully automated process, okay? power for the automation. You've got to run the controller unit. You've got to actuate the control signals. Okay, a lot of control signals are just a few volt of signal. And you've got to have a da data acquisition. Okay, um, sensors, those kinds of things, and information processing. Alright, a program of instructions. These are the commands that tell what's going to happen step by step. Think about the CNC code. To uh, machine a tool. All right, that is a specific step-by-step -step set of instructions. Okay, um, and in each step, things change, and they change the process parameters. Okay, so temperature setting of a furnace, furnace is one. Um, axis position, whether that's multiple axes or a single axis, motor on and off, lamp on and off all varieties of um, controls, all right? Okay, decision making in a program work cycle, all right? Um, there is, there are automated systems where you have to make decisions, where there's operator interaction. The most common one, one that we all interact with is the ATM machine. You have to interact and tell it how much money you want or whether you want to make a deposit. Now you can even buy stamps from the ATM, okay? So operator interaction is required on that. That's still a fully automated system, okay? Um, sometimes you have to tell a system it has a different part or a different product, okay? So um, here, if this were a robotic welding assembly, you know, you may have to tell it which model. That is an even higher step of automation when it reads which model it is and makes an adjustment accordingly, okay? And sometimes things have natural variations in the incoming product, all right? And so you may have to um, do additional levels of work for something like that, okay? All right. So open loop, loop control means there's no feedback, okay? They're simple, they're less expensive, um, and, you know, it kind of minimizes unintended consequences, all right? That's open loop control, no feedback, all right? 
closed loop control means there is feedback, okay? And when there's feedback, it means there has to be a sensor, all right? And it's going to make a decision, all right? It doesn't mean it necessarily has to correct for the action or solve the problem, but it has to respond to some variable it's sensing, okay? That may be to shut the line down and alert the operator that there's a problem, all right? Feedback can come from a variety of things. It could come from a limit switch. It could come from a thermocouple. It could come from a phototransistor. It could come from a photoresistor. It could come from a scale. It could come from an optical scanning machine. There are an endless number of choices on what can provide the feedback, okay? So the difference between open loop and closed loop means that there is feedback, okay? Open loop control does not mean that there isn't a timer involved. There may very well be a timer involved in the system, all right? But that doesn't mean that it's closed loop control, all right? Think about the idea of an automatic sprinkler system. You ever been driving past somewhere that had an automatic sprinkler system? It's pouring down rain and the sprinkler's running? That's because it's on a timer. It doesn't know it's raining, it's not monitoring the moisture, and it's going to run anyway. All right, so uh, this is a picture, as you can see, of a very old iPod. Um, but so is that an open or closed loop situation? All right, so what's the process, what's the output, what's the feedback, okay? An MP3 player or an iPod is a closed loop process. There's feedback. You provide it in the form of turning the little rotary dial here, okay? And when you turn that, it adjusts the volume, right? Or if you press one of these buttons, you can advance the songs forward and back, okay? All right, so there is an operator interaction component on this one, okay? The device process is is that request and responds to it okay then you hear what's happening all right see here's an here's the sprinkler okay closed loop control system the one we all interact with the refrigerator light okay when you open the refrigerator the switch is released and the light comes on okay when you close the door the switch is depressed and the light goes off all right so remember, the difference between open and closed loop control is feedback. Closed loop has feedback, open loop does not. All right, so think, look at it this way. This is a one axis control system, okay? So here's the controller and you put in the X value you want, all right? The controller tells the motor what to do and it begins to adjust, all right? the optical encoder senses where it is and sends feedback okay and so now the system continues to try to correct for where it actually is and where it's supposed to be all right if there's no optical encoder here this is open loop control but since there is it's closed loop control all right there are five different levels of automation okay the most is the enterprise level. The least is device level, okay? And you can have all these levels in between. You can see the different descriptions and examples here, okay? Please note this one starts at five and goes down to one. This one starts at one and goes down to five, okay? But take some time, look that over, okay? There's no big secret or um, something you can't understand there, all right? Okay, I hope this helps. Remember to be sure to watch the video on industrial robotics. Thanks. Have a good week. Bye.